Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, word to my brethren all across the world. Shout out to the whole world. No matter what city, what state, what continent you're from, BT loves you. Now, as you guys know, we we, we just had a recent big fight uh, conclude, you know, one of the biggest fights of the year uh, between Kell Brook and Earl Spence. That was one that I was very excited for. Unfortunately, Kell Brook did not come out on top like I thought he would and how I wanted him to. But, you know, mad respect to Earl Spence. And now, you know, we have a fight this weekend between Fanfaro and Stevenson. But let's be honest here. A lot of us as boxing fans, we're going to tune in, we're going to watch. But the fight we really care about is not happening until June 17th. And that comes in the form of Andre Ward versus Sergey Kovalev. And if you've been on this channel for the last six months and some change, anytime in that time frame, you know how, um, you know that, I've, that I've, I've talked a lot about Kovalev and a lot about Ward. A lot of you guys know Andre Ward is probably my least favorite boxer out there. Um, and, you know, with this rematch coming, you know, I'm going to, by the way, I will be in Las Vegas. I will be there in the flesh at the Mandalay Bay to watch this fight. So, so how at your boy BT if you're out there. But, you know, th there's going to be a lot of videos coming out from this channel about Kovalev Ward because this is a fight that, all feelings aside, you know, stylistically is, a, is, is an interesting fight. There was a lot of controversy in the first fight with the decision. And, um... You know, another wrinkle, another wrinkle to the Ward Kovalev saga, uh, which is one of the most fiercest rivalries in boxing. You know, one of the only, you know, rivalries where these guys genuinely don't like each other. Um. So with that being said, you know, another wrinkle has been added, and if you guys haven't heard already, as I'm sure if you follow boxing, you have heard this because I'm, I'm I'm a little late, but um, apparently all these reports are coming out about. Andre Ward and Virgil Hunter and the whole Andre Ward camp, apparently, like, before the negotiations for the second fight, for the rematch even started, Ward and his whole team, in a, in a, in a move of gamesmanship, tried to recruit Sergey Kovalev's trainer, John David Jackson, one of the best in the business, the guy that made Kovalev a champion. He was with them before he was a champion, and he's been with them all, all there for the whole ride. They tried to recruit John David Jackson to join the Ward camp and train Andre Ward for this fight uh, with Sergey Kovalev. So look, from what Virg, um, John David Jackson said in this video um, that I'm about to play you guys uh, with Fight Hub TV, shout out to Marcus Viegas over there. Um, he said that they called him, they called the, that the, the Ward camp being Hunter, Ward, probably Josh Dubin, James Prince, you know, those guys, they, probably, they called him in January and I made my video the, uh, probably the day, the day after Christmas or two days after Christmas about Andre Ward being a disgrace to boxing in December. Now, if I would have heard about this in January when it was happening, I would have um, I would have doubled down and probably made another one of those videos because honestly, um, you know, I, I, I you know, there's nothing that much more to say. Andre, I, that to me, it's, it's it, it, there's there's either one or two ways you can interpret that move by Andre Ward um, of him trying to get John David Jackson to his team. Either a he really doesn't believe he can win this fight, and he wants to know every last weakness Sergey Kovalev has. Or B, it's all smoke and mirrors and just another way to get in Kovalev's head, and it's just pure gamesmanship. Now, personally, I think it's the latter. Ward, to me, and, and, and you know, I, I have friends, right? I have a lot of friends because, you know, I used to box a little bit. But I have friends, you know, some younger, some older, um, who are amateur boxers. And I always tell them, like, look, whether you like a fighter or you don't like a fighter, there's something that you can take from every fighter. So, like, for example, I was telling somebody this. I was telling a friend of mine this um, not even one month ago, a uh, kid I know who's an amateur boxer. I was saying that, you know, I don't like Andre Ward at all. He's my least favorite boxer. But the one thing I could always take from Andre Ward is the fact that he is, you know, his, his mental approach to the sport and going into the ring. Like, very cerebral guy, um, thinks about things, probably thinks about – things in and out the ring three times as much as the next fighter, which I think, which is allowed him to be successful and get into the level where he's at in boxing. So I, I respect that part of Ward. And I think it's that cerebral side of Ward that's trying to get that mental edge on Kovalev, um, trying to get John David Jackson. I want to play you guys a little bit of the clip of Marcus Vegas, and we will dissect from there. So let's have a listen. The reports that are coming out uh, about uh, people saying that you were offered a, a spot to him, Ward's camp, or offered to train him. Can you clear all that up for me? Well, it's true. I was offered this. I was here. The thing I was offered a, a deal, and uh, you know, in the end, I didn't take it. I, I have loyalty to my to my fighter, and um, so.
So, you know, I, I stay there. But I, 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 I'm honest with people. I'll tell you this. I'll be honest. If they had gave me four knocks, I would have went. <laughs> I'd have been, I'd, I'd have been there. But they didn't, they didn't give me that. So, um, you know, but my loyalty to my fighter, uh, I, I was with him before he was champion. We, 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 we won the title together. And for the good, we've had a good run. And I want to see him win this title back. So, and then, I, you know, my loyalty won out, won over everything else. Uh, but let the fans know, the, the, the rumor was I reached out to them. I would never do that. They, they reached out to me. Okay. And the, the funny thing is they, they asked me, please don't say anything about this, or they deny it. But when the, now they try to throw me under the bus. And I'm saying, I'm saying I'm the one who reached out to them. I would never do that. You know, that's not my, that's just not my way and not my style. And then I proved my point because I stayed with my fighter. I stayed loyal to my fighter, and I'm here. Um, but, yeah, initially they, they came to me with an offer to – switch camps do you think that was done on purpose the the whole them telling you don't say anything and then they put it out there to kind of create some dissent oh no i think about it sound about it sound to deal with him well, yeah. they, 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 <laughs> it would have been a problem yeah. um it's just i just sit back i'm laughing now because i'm saying you know they, they said please don't, don't, don't mention this and then they try to throw me in the bus and say i reached out to them because it's all gamesmanship now now they're trying to get some sergey's head absolutely. and like your trainer didn't want to be with you and now they're, from what I heard, I haven't read the article, but they were saying like America, you know, the Americans, and the Russians and all this crap. Well, here's, here's my, my theory with that. I'm a black man in America. I could walk down the street and get shot by a cop. So how much do I really trust America and being American? And, and I can get shot. My kids can get shot. I train, I train fighters, not because of where they're from, where they grew up. I train fighters if they're good or not. So I get a very hell of a fighter. And we got together and we, and we, and we, we jail well in the ring. So it worked, you know. Uh, doesn't matter where you're from. I don't. I don't look at if you're from America or if you're from Saudi Arabia, or Mexico, or wherever. I don't care about that. If you can fight, you can fight. If I, I think you got potential to be a good fighter, I want to help you get there. So, you know, now they're now, now they're using the, um, this America Russia thing. You know, I, I have no problem with that. I know, you know, what the deal is. Who was the one that reached out to you for the deal? All right. Well, I'm gonna cut it off right there, but. So there you have it. A couple, a couple of key takeaways from John David Jackson Stevens. So number one, um, he clarifies that reports that came out saying that he reached out to the Ward Camp when, in fact, uh, as he um, verified in that interview, it was the Ward Camp that reached out to him. So John David Jackson, not a snake. Uh, I believe him. You know, he didn't reach out to the Ward Camp. Um, he then goes on by talking about his loyalty to his fighter, and you know that's all fine and dandy. I'm all for that concept, but let's be honest. He even said it himself. If they would, I don't know what his number in his head was but they didn't give him whatever he wanted so james james prince and all those guys they weren't they didn't really want john david jackson the way they said they do it's gamesmanship because they really wanted him they would have paid him what he asked for he's one of the best trainers in the business so with that being taken into account it was gamesmanship and last but not least the third thing he said was uh you know because i guess james prince and Josh Dubin and Ward and that whole team over there, they, they, they made it a whole America thing, you know, America and we're against the Russians and America, America, America. And, you know, that's all great. I'm all for patriotism. You know, I'm American. I love America. But John David Jackson put it beautifully. I don't give a damn if he say basically pretty much. I don't give a damn if you're from America, Russia, Saudi Arabia. If you could fight, you could fight. And if I can make you help you make you better. Then that's what my job as a trainer is. And I think that's beautiful because, you know, on the YTBC and the YouTube box community, the small community of internet boxing media slash fans, you know, people had this, I don't know, they had their political views that kind of leak into their, you know, YouTube channel. And they have, they, they're they either extremely, extremely racist, uh, radical um, black boxing fans, or they're like, extremely racist you know white guys there's always like a there's no really happy medium and i'm not i'm not that i'm just calling it how it is a lot of you guys know that i don't need to tell you that but i think put that beautifully for the people in the ytbc and in the box community that aren't on youtube you know hey it's not about where you come from if you could fight you could fight and i'm here to help so my question is was the ward was ward's team attempt to actually get john david jackson was it gamesmanship or was it truly like well, they did. They really want him on the team, and I, I don't think they do. They, they did, because if they did, they would have paid the man what he asked. You know, when, when we have a guy like John David Jackson, who um, is a great trainer, has worked under some some pretty good names in the sport, um, has been a guy that's helped Kovalev get better. You know, that, that, that anybody who's been following Kovalev for his career knows that John David Jackson has improved his boxing ability, his um, you know, just his feet. His feet have become a lot you know smarter under John David Jackson. 
And uh, what, what he brought with power, John David Jackson fine tuned and made this refined killer that we've known as light heavyweight cha- that we knew as a heavyweight champion and a guy that can potentially regain his light heavyweight titles and um, be potentially in the, in the position for bigger fights down the line. So um, I don't really believe that they really wanted John David Jackson. And this is all just a ploy and Ward to get in his head. And I mean, if you watch the HBO preview show for Ward Kovalev, Ward was talking about nothing but being in Kovalev's head. So that he's he's trying to play the mental game. And that's very important in boxing because it's a, it's a very mental thing. And, um, you know, we'll see who has the mental edge come fight week. That's usually when these things become more apparent. But as of right now, it's just it's just pure gamesmanship. And Ward is either going to look like the biggest genius in the book or he's going to get his ass whooped and, and, and beaten into next week by say, Kovalev. So we'll see how it all plays out. I'm looking forward to seeing how it all works, plays out. I'm hoping that we have less holding in this fight. And may the best man truly win. Um, you know, I'm not an Andre Ward fan, but I like to see if he can, um, you know, make the adjustment here as the quote unquote boxer. I don't, I don't think he's a better like skillful boxer. I think he's more of an inside, you know, kind of mauling fight like Bernard Hopkins was. But he's not the skillful boxer that a lot of people make him out to be. He can fight, be be that skillful boxer in spurts. But as far as a guy like Kovalev, who's multi multidimensional, has a great jab, um, you know, punchy power to boot, you know. I don't think so, but you know, let, let me know what you guys think. Do you do you believe that Ward and his team's attempt to get Sergey Kovalev? Do you believe it was genuine or just smoke and mirrors? Leave your comments down below. Take the time to subscribe, and you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys.